Community of Chemistry graduate students. Um, so this is part of a panel series that we put together to kind of help graduate students think about finding a job or think about things that are important to them in graduate school. So stress management is definitely one of those things. Um, so part of these series is we're actually putting a videos together with professors from the university. So if you look at our Facebook page or our departmental web page, you'll see those. Um, but for these, we have a few questions that were sent in from you guys, so we'll probably start out with those for the day. Um, but we have professors uh, Aaron Masseri, uh, Connie Liu, and Chris Douglas here. So we'll start out by having them give an introduction to us just about where they're from, where they went to grad school, and then we can start with questions. And we'll start with a few of those that were prepared and sent in to me. So. No. My name is Aaron Masseri. Um, I'm a physical chemistry professor here. I've been here for about 10 years. And um, I did my undergraduate education at Arizona State in chemistry. And then I did my grad school work at Northwestern, uh, postdoc at Stanford. And um, yeah, as long as I could know. That's great. <laughs> Okay. Hi, I'm Connie Wu. I'm an inorganic um, chemist. I started my, I, I came to the U in 2009. Um, my education, uh, my BS is from MIT. My PhD was from Caltech. Um, at Caltech, I worked with Jonas Peters. My postdoc um, was very different. I went to Germany, went abroad to work with Carl B. Cart at the Max Planck there. Um, and that's it. <laughs> I'm Chris Douglas. I'm an organic chemist. Uh, I earned my undergraduate degree here, uh, and then I was a graduate student at the University of California, Irvine, with uh, Larry Overman. And then Connie and I actually overlapped briefly at Caltech. I was a postdoc there with Bob Grubbs. I started here in 2007, which means I'm coming up on my time here. I'm one year behind Aaron in the program. Sounds good. So one of the questions that was sent in to us, and you can pick which order you would like to go into, but what are the main factors that you think contribute to student stress in graduate school here? Just to get your ideas on that. Graduating. Um, <laughs> the, the looming uh, threat of graduating, what you're gonna, what you have to do after you graduate, where you're gonna go, and um, I think a lot of, I think a lot of students don't really know what they're gonna do until they get closer to graduation. And sometimes even when graduation is upon you, you still don't know what you're going to do. So that's, that's, a, that's a sort of stress that just gets worse and worse as it gets closer and closer to graduation. So it's, that, it's a tough situation. You want to achieve graduating, but um, then you don't know what you're going to do. So. Yeah, I agree. I think the stress probably, is, um, at least it was the highest for me, uh, kind of in the fourth year. Um, so I would say here that would be um, maybe after your third year talk till uh, your defense date. And I think um, it's how to do it. Um, and I think it's also, you know, we all come in very optimistic and we all have high expectations of where we see our graduate career going. And then, you know, you're three years in and then uh, maybe fall short of your own expectations and it's it's learning how to be strategic to deal with the stress and use it in a positive way to succeed. Yeah, I'll piggyback on something Connie mentioned uh, is that the expectations are not always well defined. I think that was borne out in the uh, survey that Phil helped put together a while ago. A big source of stress for graduate students in particular was that the, their understanding of where the expectations were and that's broad, I'm saying expectation broadly yes. defined, right? Like, right. what's a thesis? What do I need to do in order to get a job? What, 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 do, I, what do I want in terms of a job? All those things can factor in the stresses that people don't necessarily know where the, expectation, where the expectations are. And that's, I think that part of that is inherent to the process. Like your PhD is not really written until the very end. You don't necessarily know what's going to be in that in that thesis until the very end. Right. We, have, we have you have yeah you have goals. I think people have an idea of what they want it to be. Um, and it's not always and since we're at the frontier of science, we don't necessarily know how we're going to make that happen. Right. And I also want to say there is no unique recipe to success. 
my graduation. And part of it is figuring out what is your recipe. And I think that's why it's nebulous, because there's actually lots of different ways you could do it. Um, and so that's part of it's figuring out what your strengths are and what you can finish. You know, what's, what's, in, what's in your circle of control versus your <laughs> circle of concern? Because we have a lot, there are things that we're concerned about that outside of our control. And, and some, even the things that, that are, it can still be stressful. Any questions that anyone would like to ask? Or you can do it the ones that were sent in. So how did you deal with the stress of graduate school? What techniques? What mechanisms did you use? I, I can say it was. It was <laughs> uh, I let's see. What did I do to deal with stress in graduate school? Um, you know, I would say that there are probably some things that I did that were positive coping mechanisms, and some things that were negative coping mechanisms. Uh, my alcohol consumption increased in graduate school, and that was probably not a good thing. Um, it's back down now. Uh, I always I made sure that I took time off for myself in graduate school. Um, so um, usually, I mean, I was in Southern California, so I took advantage. Um, on Sundays, at least during my first two years of graduate school, I went to the beach and took care of, you know, and in addition to taking care of all the stuff that we do on like grocery shopping and all that sort of stuff, but I made sure that I took some time for myself to sort of like kind of hit the reset button a little bit and then go back into the next week. A couple of the other things that I, I tried to do was clarify expectations with my advisor. My advisor did have expectations that he put out there in terms of things like work hour expectations and stuff like that. And every once in a while, my advisor used to like to do these things where he sort of sent these blast emails to the group or made a comment at group meeting about work effort and stuff like that. And so when I felt stressed from that, I would clarify with him, it's like, or I would say, okay, I, I'm thinking about doing the, uh, I would like to set up my time like this. Is this okay with you or give, give me feedback on this? So getting feedback from my advisor helped reduce my stress level by clarifying what the expectations were. Um. If you have an exercise routine, I think that's wonderful. Um, I myself wonder how I can deal with stress today. <laughs> and I like to go for a walk, get out of the office, get some sunshine. Um, and that usually helps, um, yeah, you know, gives you me more positive energy, lets go some of, some of that negative energy. Um, I also used to like to swim in grad school because I could actually think while swimming. And, and that would be a very calming um, exercise for me. So I didn't necessarily use it to work out. <laughs> it was more of a mental therapy than it was meant to be. Because I swim very, very slow, actually. So <laughs> it's definitely not going to be a workout. Um, I don't know. I agree. You have to give yourself a break. You have to realize you can't work 24-7. Um, um, and I think be true to yourself. You know when you're working hard. And I also um, worked for assistant professor who had very high expectation of work hours. And part of it was, you know, um, a lot of it was unspoken negotiation, but we eventually, um, you know, once you are productive, your advisor does not care what hours you work, as long as it's within a safe limit. But, um, but I think when you take control, when you, um, when you take responsibility for your results, then I think most advisors would back down because they enforce those rules because they think these are um, metrics that help you succeed. But if you already feel that way and are, are working hard towards those goals in your own way, by your own schedule, um, but I personally wouldn't have much issues with that. Yeah. I, think, I think I'm uh, <clears throat> notoriously bad at dealing with stress. Um, I definitely have drank too much, um, done things that I shouldn't do in response to stress, just to sort of sort of escapism sort of things. Um, but I, I think that I the things that, that Connie and Chris are saying are true, and I have found that they are helpful to me. Um, 
going for a walk, doing something which is sort of orthogonal to what you're supposed to be doing in the lab. Um, sometimes just changing scenery for me is helpful. When I was in grad school, I would, if I was writing, sometimes I would just go and write in the library, or sometimes I would go to um, somebody else's lab where I had friends, you know, and like sit in one of their offices and work, and just kind of sometimes changing the environment is enough. Um, I did, I don't know if this is a good suggestion or not, but I, I changed my schedule occasionally. Like I would start, I would come in at, at two or three in the afternoon and go home really late at night. Um, not because, well, it was, that was good for a number of reasons. It was good because it changed my overlap with people in the lab. Um, and it was just a, a change of scenery. So a lot of times for me, it's really helpful just to have to do something that is orthogonal to what is stressing you out and um, change the change the the trajectory just in some some way. I don't know if that's good or bad, but that's that's usually my approach. I think Aaron's advice is really good. That that reminded me of something that I did when I was a graduate student. At various times when things were really stressful for me, and including when I was writing my thesis and really stuck during the writing process. Uh, two of my close friends from undergrad here moved to Tucson, Arizona, which is only seven hours by car uh, <laughs> from, from Irvine. Uh, and I would hop in the car and go drive, and, and we'll call that person code, but we'll just show up. But I would have these little mini vacation. I would take a little mini vacation. And I spent at least four days in Tucson with them when I was, and I brought my laptop and worked on my thesis while I was there. So vacations actually do help. They, 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 they can work. I think we should take it, we should take advantage of that time to again just change your scenery a little bit. Change